Sure, welcome in. Thanks for joining. Um, I'm Lori McConico, and I'm here tonight just to talk a little bit about the undergraduate research program here at Cuesta. And I happen to be the PI for the grant that supports that research. Um, I'm a biologist, so I'm here uh, in Cuesta as a faculty member in the biology department. Um, but here representing a range of different research opportunities for our students. And so I don't know, is it, a, a, well, I don't want to say your name wrong, but um, Estefania, maybe? Uh, I'm not sure. If you have some specific questions, you're welcome to start out by asking those. Um, either in the chat or in the Q&A, totally up to you, or if not, um, okay, Stephanie, <laughs> I, I was trying hard. <laughs> um, I can just go through and show you a little bit about some of the research opportunities, if that sounds like a good plan. Will that work for you? You could just give me a thumbs up in the chat or a, sounds good. Or if you have a question, you're going into biology, perfect. Well, welcome. We are excited to have you here. Um, so, well, that'll make it even better then. Maybe I'll, I'll skip through. No, I'll show you all the parts. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what happened to my screen. Um, it's doing something silly for me here. Okay, so um, we got a grant recently in order to increase the number of undergraduate research opportunities for our students. And I'm, again, the lead PI or principal investigator on that particular grant. And one of the things that we learned when we first sort of started figuring out, you know, what, what are students interested in? Are students interested in undergraduate research opportunities? Um, we know it's super important um, from the sort of faculty standpoint that students who are in their first and second year of college don't have to wait maybe until they transfer, right, in order to get those extra research experiences. And so we polled our students um, as a part of some focus groups and surveying that we did back in the spring of 2020. And what we found was that everybody was interested in undergraduate research, right? But not everybody had had an opportunity um, to be able to participate. This number 54% here was really kind of us trying to feel out our students too, to get a, an idea of how interested they might be in an undergraduate STEM seminar, where they could learn about not only best practices in STEM, but hear from a variety of guest speakers that are actually working in science, um, not even just on campus, but outside of campus too, right? Um, and so we got some good feedback on that. And again, unfortunately, uh, most all of our students, 89%, hadn't had a chance to participate in undergraduate research opportunities. And so we thought, okay, we're gonna invent, right? Or we're gonna develop our STEM seminar course. And this is showing up a little bit funky, um, at least on my end, but let me see what you can see. That's so weird. Um, at any rate, um, we have developed a STEM seminar course called Bio 295. And in this seminar course, it's co-taught by myself and my colleague, Silvio. He's a microbiologist. I'm a marine biologist. And so we're going to be able to offer this course for the first time together um, this fall. And if you're a new student at Cuesta, um, this is a great opportunity to learn about kind of, you know, how to be successful in STEM, right? How to write a CV, how to give a presentation. Um, and then more importantly, or maybe interesting, is that we're going to have guest speakers probably once every other week from out of the area that are able to share with us, again, their expertise in anything from veterinarian medicine to physics to marine biology to microbiology, um, even psychology and engineering so that people can kind of see like, what are the opportunities across the board in STEM? And it's the first time that we're able to offer this class. If you're at all interested, it's gonna run on Thursday nights for two hours once a week. And the idea would be like first hour is a guest speaker and second hour is a chance to again, learn a skill, right? How can I prep that CV? How can I make a poster for research purposes? How can I learn more about opportunities in STEM on campus? And so um, I would definitely encourage enrollment in this class. Um, it would be, we would be pumped to have you. <laughs> and I think you would really get a lot out of it, mostly too, because a lot of our courses are still gonna be online in the fall. 
And with this particular course, even though it's online, that actually opens up a huge door for us to be able to get guest speakers from pretty much anywhere. Um, so we can use Zoom to our benefit and it's gonna be synchronous. So it wouldn't be like that you log in at five every Thursday and then you just have to like click through modules, right? You'd see me, you'd see Silvio, you'd see a guest speaker and then have a chance to work with your peers. So I kind of see it as like a double win that you also get a chance then to meet your peers in a time when it's not super easy to meet peers. So anyway, I think it can really help to get you on the right footing for um, finding your STEM friends, uh, which is really important, right, for success in classes. And so that's what's coming up. And for whatever reason, you can't see the picture for the flyer. It's not a huge deal, but that's what's missing from that slide. And I have no idea where it went. <laughs> um, these are all of my colleagues that are helping us out with undergraduate research here at Cuesta College. And so we have everything again from anthropology, bio, engineering, math, physics, um, physical sciences, and psychology. So lots of opportunities, not just in biology. Um, and then I just wanted to highlight quickly. So with anthropology, a lot of the opportunities are embedded. So you might be on a biology track, but um, you likely need to take an anthro or some kind of social, I'll say sciences course, right? And Lisa Mifsud offers embedded research in her anthropology courses. And so you can see some of the students doing field work outside of a classroom here. So it might be a cool opportunity to learn about um, physical anthropology. She's really involved in like forensic science. Um, or the osteology, right, behind um, anthropo anthropological, anthropological work. <laughs> um, very interesting and cool lady. Um, there's an opportunity to get involved in math research. This is a brand new course. And if you're interested in improving math skills or even just having a chance to participate in something where you might um, work in small groups and get a publication out of it, that's what's happening with the math um, particular course. And this is brand new this fall too. It's Math 290 and Guillermo is actually on um, line today in another session. So if you're excited to hear more about that, I think his course is actually going to be offered in both fall and spring terms. So uh, there are a couple of prereqs for that one. So if you're not ready for it yet, it's a great one to have on your radar. Oh, for enrollment. Yeah, for any of these courses, definitely speaking to a counselor is great. You have a chance, so the question was about speaking um, or how do I enroll in courses? And so making sure that you're first a registered student, if you still haven't gone through that process yet, um, it's a fairly, uh, I won't say straightforward, right? But pretty intuitive, but speaking to a counselor can help get you on the right path for that too. And they have virtual drop-in um, sessions and things of that nature. Um, you could specifically say that you're a STEM student and you heard about the STEM seminar or you heard about the math course and you really wanna know how to get on track for those. Um, but the cool thing is, is that we actually have some research opportunities this summer too in biology that have no prereqs. And that's a great way to get started too. So, um, you know, if we're kind of clicking through here, GIS and oceanography is another area where students can get involved. Um, Frida Schroeder, Dr. Schroeder is online today too, if you want to hear from her. Um, engineering opportunities as well. Um, and then psychology, a research course called Methods and Research Methods in Psychology. And since you're a biologist, I just wanted to skip ahead a little bit so that you could see kind of the course numbers here. Um, for all of these, you have chances to either just do, I'll say something that's project-based, um, where you're maybe just taking a regular lab course, right? And in that regular lab course, you learn about scientific method. But some of the other ones are more specific, right? Where maybe the whole course is dedicated to research or a field excursion. And so if you're looking at this list here, you might see the Bio 209 series. If you are a biologist, you wanna take at least one of these courses. They are one unit courses. And when we're back to being in person, um, they are four day field trip courses where the one that ends in C, you can do coastal field studies where we go kayaking and camping either in Big Sur or out at the Channel Islands. So that's Bio 209C, it's offered in the spring. D is for desert. That one's also offered in the spring. Um, they go out to the Mojave Desert and then they stay at a field station out there called Zizix. Um, there are no vowels in that name, kind of crazy <laughs> uh, in a cool way. And then Sierra Field Studies, we go up to Yosemite and then up and over to um, 
on the other side of the Sierra to Mono Lake. And so each of those is a four day field experience where maybe you're learning some skills, but again, more than anything, you are building some really cool relationships with faculty and with students. So some of the students are in the top, oops, hello, got a little bit away from myself. And then the top picture here uh, with the students that look like they're standing on a pile of rocks. <laughs> uh, and so that one is a cool opportunity. And then, um, let's see, botany research experiences through the botany courses, and then chances for independent study uh, and biology research. And so if I just go forward, this is the course that's being offered this summer. Uh, it's called Bio 210M, and there are no prerequisites, so you could enroll um, and then start participating uh, pretty quickly, right? Uh, the registration for summer just opened. So speaking to a counselor could get you on the right track for this one. You have no prereqs. And so what students learn in this course are a combination of field uh, skills, right? Where they're out there and they're sampling eelgrass beds and Morro Bay Estuary. That's what the students are doing in the top picture. And then down on the bottom right, you can see now they're back in the lab and what are they looking at, right? Well, they're looking at the two other pictures, right? The plant, and then to see if there was a slime mold, the microscopic organisms in the top right that were growing on that plant. And so we learn how do we collect data in the field? And then how do we come back into the lab and process those data and then keep track of them over time? Now, that's a 10 day course, it's just, um two units and again a great chance to meet some students in person in a time where we don't have a lot of things happening in person uh, it's a phenomenal course even if you can't do it this summer it's offered every um spring or every between spring and summer right so that may and june time slot and then the last one i wanted to make sure you were aware of um this is a, a technically a non-majors course marine biology but in the summertime it has a dedicated research component um, and so for this course, you take it in the summer and it'll be offered back in person again in summer 2022. And we spend one week on campus learning about marine biology, but then we spend two weeks in Baja, Mexico in the Gulf of California. And you can see some of the scenery here, but students are out on boats um, most all days, but certainly on the water, um, even if we're not on a boat um, when we're there, having a chance to explore and then invent their own research projects. And so it's a really cool opportunity, again, just to, to number one, study abroad, and then number two, get that research experience uh, by developing your own project. And this course, actually, we got some funding to be able to offer some partial grants and scholarships now for um, various students who qualify, um, really trying to increase diversity and inclusion in these courses. And so um, that's something to keep in mind. But even without scholarship, there are somewhere around $1,200 to $1,400 for the whole time. And so, again, if you're just starting at Cuesta, really cool to kind of have these things on your radar. Um, you can always reach out to me if you have any questions. Here are some of our students doing research on fiddler crabs, clams, sea stars, um, sponges, gorgonians, all of that, all just via snorkeling. And so all of these things happen in the summertime. And you can see my email down there on the bottom. It's Lori underscore McConico at Cuesta.edu. You can email me about any questions you have related to biology. I'd be happy to chat with you. Um, and just because I know I've said a lot, um, if we go down here to the bottom, I'm going to post it one more time. This is our website for undergraduate research. And so this is a great place to find not only my email contact information, but to see all about all of those other courses um, that are being offered. And so, um, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of a mouthful. <laughs> but... <laughs> If you have any other questions, yeah. Thank you so much for coming. It's really nice to hear from you. Speak to your counselor and for sure, reach out.